right, welcome back to our painting tutorial of the uh, scenic base for the anti-tank gun. And all of our wash has dried uh, from our last video on the uh, sandbags. We put a strong tone wash over the entire entirety of the sandbags. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take beige and we are going to dry brush that all over the entirety of the the sandbags. So we'll put that on the on the wet on the palette. And we're just gonna mix in a little bit of pale sand. I had a little bit there, added a little bit too much. <laughs> so we're going to mix that up as best we can. Just use a just use a crappy brush to do that with. Just mix the beige and the pale sand together. A good ratio would be 75% beige and 25% pale sand. But I think I got a good consistency there. We're kind of going for a warm beige, something along those lines. So we are going to take our paper towel and we're gonna use a smaller dry brush than the uh, last one we used. And we're gonna put it, we're gonna start dry brushing our sandbags. Just getting the excess off. And here we go. We're going to probably do this in stages and remember less is, is more. <laughs> what I mean by that is, is you don't want a lot on your brush because you can always add more. Um, you don't want to add too much because if you add too much, you have to start the process all over again. So we'll get most of the paint off our brush here and we'll continue to just move back and forth doing our dry brushing. And as you can see, they're looking like some war-torn, muddy sandbags there. Well, they're beginning to, anyway. So, I'm gonna wipe off the excess, and we'll just keep moving on. So I'm gonna continue doing this, and getting in all the over the all the sandbags on the piece here and I'll be back to show you what it looks like. All right. Now there's our initial dry brush. Uh, as you can see, it's a lot wider and in here. It's a little bit muddier and dingier. This is where it's all dried up. So now what we're going to do is add our second highlight to our sandbags. And to do this, we're going to grab our small dry brush like we had before and we're going to put just straight pale sand onto our palette just a little bit wider not as uh not as yellow so we're just gonna get the top parts of our sandbags and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get the most majority of the paint off the brush and we're just gonna go down I'm just going to dry brush down. Okay, nice and easy. Just adds another highlight to your sandbag. We're going to do that across all of our sandbags here. Just to highlight the edges. A little bit more contrast in your sandbags. So there you go. Now I'm going to carry on doing it to the rest of it. And I'll be back in a second to show you what it looks like.
All right, we have that licked where it's good to go. All finished with that part. We have our sandbags. They're all highlighted up. They're dry brushed. They're looking good. As you can see, it's a little bit wetter and dirtier in there. And it's a little bit more dried out on out here. And we did our dry brush on that too. And I got a little bit on the boxes, as you can see. But I went ahead and just did it all the way around and it looks like some more weathering on the boxes too. So that's cool. Um, but our sandbags are finished and they look awesome. Um, if you have a different way you paint sandbags, that's perfectly fine. Please do it your way, whatever way you feel comfortable. This is just the way I do it to where it looks, it looks good to me and it matches all the rest of my sandbags that I already have, um, with my terrain. So let's do a test shot here and that's looking pretty cool. Uh, we're almost there. So now what we need to do is we need to highlight this tree and work on it. So let's do that. So uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab some colors and uh, we'll get on with that. Be right back. All right. So got our colors together. It's the same colors as we used on the ground, uh, except uh, we're going to be doing things a little bit different and we're going to start with uh, flat earth and we're going to do an overall dry brush to the the tree itself and since it's going to be kind of war torn tree we're going to be doing some different things here all right so we're going to grab our big brush again and some of that flat brown we're going to do some more dry brushing. We're going to start at the tree trunk and we're just going to dry brush up as we go here. All right. All right. And we're just going to go across the whole entire thing. And don't be too concerned about being insanely careful. Uh, get some of this paint on there. Um, it's going to be a two-tone tree. And uh, we're going to be darkening it down significantly. Um, as we go here. So don't be too stingy with this dry brush. It's more like an overbrush, kind of like how we did for the, the ground. We're just kind of we're highlighting it up. And the cool thing is about this tree and the way I made it is you can move because it's made of wire and use this latex rubber. And it will not break. You can just move it and it bends a different direction. So you don't you want to do it slowly, of course. <laughs> don't wing it like I did. But uh, um, or don't move it quickly like I did. So just get your paint on there, spread it out throughout the whole entire tree. And all right. We'll have a look at it there. As you can see, you're starting to get some more tones out of this tree. I think we got her. That's our first color. And hopefully you can kind of see how it looks. You can see all those contours and that we made with that latex rubber. And it looks like just a, a fiddly tree. So, and it's a dead tree. <laughs> so the next color we're gonna use to uh, paint it is not that much different, just a little bit brighter, is our beige brown that we used on the crates. So we're sticking with a theme here, and I'm not even gonna clean off my dry brush there because it'll kind of blend the colors together. And this is just a little bit lighter 
you want to clean your brush off a little bit more with this one. That way. There we go. All right. That way you don't get too much on there. Because you want to keep some of that uh, flat earth on there for sure. So we're going to do that. So a little bit at a time there. Just kind of going over the tree. And what we're wanting is many different colors uh, on the tree itself. We don't want just one flat brown or, or what have you, um, or flat earth. We want to get a couple different highlights on it. Because um, no tree has just one shade on it or one dry brush. They have multiple shades. Okay. All right. I'm going to go over the tree limbs more than I do on the regular part of the trunk. I want to get those a little bit brighter. Makes them stand out, as you can see. There you go. Much brighter. And we're going to keep working that color up as we go up to the top here. So I'll put a little bit on the trunk. So our tree's starting to come together. So now we're going to use brown sand, which is just a shade higher. And we're just going to mix that right in with our um, beige brown that we were just using on our brush. And this time we're going to focus this color towards the top of the limbs first. And then when there's a little paint left over, um, we'll hit the trunk. And we're just hitting the tips of it. That's all we're doing. We're just kind of doing a dry brush or overbrush or whatever you want to call it. We just want many different colors on this tree. Just to give it that vari variation. So I'm hitting the bottom now just very softly. Not as heavy as I'm hitting the tops. To the top branches, I should say. Here we go. And the more layers you put on here, the more and more it does look like a tree. So, there you go. Get all sides, look all the way around, make sure you're hitting everything. So now what we're gonna do, since we're at that point, as you can see, the tree's got many different colors. I'm going to mix a little bit of that pale sand we were already using in with the color that I'm using. And it just makes it a little bit brighter. Might as well use the colors. It's on the palette already. And we're going to get the majority of our brush, the paint off of our brush. Maybe we want this to be very, very light. I keep wiping it on myself. <laughs> so we're going to hit just the top branches where light will hit it. And we're getting closer and closer to that ash color. Like it's been hit with something. That's kind of what we're going for a little bit. There we go. It's already starting to brighten up and you're already starting to see the colors in the tree.
turn it around. Make sure you get all sides of this, all sides of the branches. And I've I've had it before where I've I've painted one, <laughs> and I forgot to do the other side. So that was uh, disastrous. So, all right. So that is our tree. I don't know if you can see the colors now. If I put my hand in front of it, see all the the, the colors and. It's a little ashy, um, like it's been burnt a little bit. But we got our bright colors where the sun's hitting. And there we go. So, that's one dead tree. <laughs> um, so now, now that we got our base colors on there, we are going to add some damage to it like it's been burnt. Uh, what I mean by that is, is I have a color called Vallejo Model Color Smoke, um, and it gives a burnt off look to your uh, miniature, or burn marks uh, to a miniature. And I'm gonna grab that and uh, we will carry on. So I'll be back in a sec. Right, so we have the model color smoke. Uh, I use this color to display like uh, burnt areas on models. So it's actually a really neat color. Um, I put some on the palette here. I'm gonna grab my big brush again. We're gonna put some paint on there and we're gonna wipe it off as best we can. Get off the big access. And now this we're just gonna put I'm going to dry brush this on the areas that are missing their limbs where they've been bitten or bitten, <laughs> blown off or, or what have you. So we're just going to Use our big brush and carry on with that. And then I'm gonna carry on putting this on here, making it look like there's a smoky look to the end. And then uh, we'll go to the next color to make it look all like it's been burnt. So I'll be back in a sec. So now that's that that's done. As you can see, there's no real big giant difference other than it's kind of, uh, let's get this out of the way. It's kind of got a darker brown look to the ends um, where it looks like it's been burnt. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our black now. And you want to get the majority of the color off your brush when you're doing this. So you don't even have to clean out your brush. You just get your black. And you really need to get a lot of the black off the brush, like a normal dry brush. And just dry brush the ends with your black. Anywhere you put that smoke, like I put a little bit right here, got a little bit down here. Just kind of we're making it, like I said, we're bringing it back down. We're making it look like it's been charred. And burnt up. So now we're doing this on the ends of the branches right now. You can do this pretty much anywhere you want on the tree itself. But I would recommend putting it where... Uh, Limbs have <clears throat> limbs have burnt off there. So continue to do this. Do this. It's gonna burn a little bit there. We're gonna char it a little bit there. It'll make more sense when we get to our final step of why I'm doing this black. Of course the black makes it look charred 
along with that smoke. You don't want to cover up smoke cover color completely. You want to leave some of that there. can see some of the charredness. Now I'm going to carry on with this until I got the right amount of black on these limbs and I'll come right back in a sec with the final step to this process. Okay so now that I have the black uh, where I want it uh, you kind of want to spread it out among the tree there. Uh, as you can see uh, I have it pretty well spread out it's kind of hard to see in some places there, but you can see the black on there and uh, around the trunk and uh, kind of some, some in the middle, stuff like that. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see. Uh, let's get closer there. But you can definitely see there's some, <clears throat> some burnt damage and stuff like that. So we're going to continue that. Uh, we're going to create some ash now. And I use ash gray. You can use sky gray for this. And uh, we're not going to clean off our brush, our dry brush. We're just going to use the same dry brush that we got the black on, which is no problem. It all mixes together. And we're going to create some ash on the tree, just in the spots that we have um, uh, black. So... This is simulating like it, it, it burnt, uh, as you know, you're looking at burnt firewood, stuff like that. So, okay, I'm going to clean this off, get a good color going here. And only in the spots where you had the black, like I was saying, you just kind of dry brush a little bit there, a little bit here anywhere that you put your black and smoke. And then what you do is add a little bit of white to that mixture and uh, build that burnt color up from black. Now I know this is done in many different layers You don't have to take it this far. I do. Of course, you don't have to take it this far. You can just leave it as a normal tree. But I like blending lots of colors together. So now we're going to, oh, here we go. We can use a little pale sand and a little bit of gray, mix that in there. Works perfectly, brightens it up pretty well. We're just kind of blending colors together, so and we'll make this ash more predominant. There we go. And on the tree where it's been burnt. And uh I like to do little pokes, like as if there's burnt parts on it. Like the ashes collected when burning wood. There we go. Starting to come out now. Should be able to see it. A lot better now. So we had some burnt area here. And on the ends here, there we go. And we'll do it crossed everywhere that has burn marks. And we want the look of ash. Like it's been burnt. I know I've said that a thousand times, but it's almost like a, a concentration mantra for me here. Making sure I don't miss anything. All right. And 
And really all you got to do is put your finger behind it and just start dabbing because you don't want to cover it. You just want to dab, have little spots. So we're going to mix a little bit more pale sand in with our gray or white if you prefer. And just get it a little bit brighter than it, what, than it is now and wipe off the excess and you're starting to see the ash where it's been burnt. So we'll create a few more spots. Spots where we already have it. And you just, like I said, you're just building up colors. You're building up your layers, even with the ash. So here we go. We'll put it back here and we'll do it up here. And before you know it, you're going to have a burnt tree with burnt ashes all over it. This is more of a stabbing than a dry brush. You're, you're kind of just, you know, stippling, really. There we go. And I think we got it. And we put a few spots, a few random spots on the tree where there's ash on it. There we go. So that's one burnt tree. <laughs> All right. And you know what else? I think... We are completed with the painting port part of the base, which is great. I love it when I'm done painting. It's always good. <laughs> so there we go. There's your ash burnt tree. So, and What we're going to do is we're going to clean it up. We're going to put a little bit more black near it and around it uh, where the ash is. And after we've done that, um, that's pretty much complete. So now you don't have to take it as far up as I did uh, with the pale sand. Uh, I brightened it up. I'm going to be darkening it down when I dry brush a little bit more black around it and stuff like that. So next up, flocking. Uh, so we're going to do some flocking and some uh, um, tufts and things like that. So I'm going to go get that all together and I'll be back in a sec. As you can see, uh, I've got quite a few things on the desk now. Uh, we are ready to flock this. Uh, so um, we're not going to do a ton. We're going to leave the middle pretty much alone. Uh, we're going to have that anti-tank gun. And <clears throat> we're just going to put some flocking around the outsides and maybe a little bit on the insides just periodically. And then we're gonna do some static grass. And <clears throat> what I have here is I have several different kinds of woodland scenics uh, flocking. We have our green grass. We got our green blend blended turf. We got our fine turf weeds, which is our darkest color. We have our fine turf burnt grass to kind of blend things together. And of course we have our earth blend, earth blend to kind of add a little bit of a dead grass color. And then we have our static grass. Now this is a little bit of green grass, uh, spring green grass mixed with some autumn grass, as you can see there, to kind of tone it down just a little bit. So. We won't start with this first. We're going to start with our regular flocking first. So the first thing to do is to get some uh, normal Elmer's uh, Elmer's glue. Uh, I got interior glue all and some water and mix that to about a 50-50%. 50% water, 50% uh, glue. So we can start doing the regular flocking. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to do our darkest color. And then we're going to blend in the brighter colors on what we're doing. So first thing to do is we're going to put some glue, 
some uh, PVA, wire down PVA on the edges here. We're just going to do a little bit at a time because it makes things easier if you do just a little bit at a time. So and if you get it on the uh, outside edge, it's no big deal. Uh, that can be scraped off with a wire brush or toothbrush, not a wire brush, but a toothbrush. Uh, if you get some that sticks there. So I'm just going to begin by putting glue on the front side here of that there. And then we're going to do some around the tree. We're just going to do a small section at a time. That way we have more control of what we're doing. So, here we go. All right. So we're going to stop there. And we're going to start adding some flock. Now, what I like to do is I, uh, since anything up against under in the shadows and stuff like that, I like using weeds to start off with. It's a good beginning point to put your darkest color uh, where the shade is. So we're going to do that. So you don't want to absolutely flood it because you're wanting to put your medium tone over the top. So we're just going to give it a light tap. Okay. <clears throat> And then we're going to put our medium blend oh, just a little bit over top of that. Okay. Oh, too much. Just trying to poof it out there. There we go. Okay. Dump that. I have it on a paper plate. And then we're going to get our regular uh, blend here, or overall blend. This is what blends it together. I'm going to put that over the top of everything. We're going to let the glue do the work. We're gonna let the glue soak up uh, all of the flocking here. There we go. And I'm kind of sprinkling it down. Um, I would, uh, you could actually do this a better way. You can actually pinch, do a pinch at a time, and it might work better. So, there's our grass blend. And we're going to put a little bit more here. All right. So, there we go. <clears throat> so we have our grass there. And just to tone it down just a little bit, I'm going to take some pinches of weeds. This color here, this burnt grass, I mean. We're just going to take a pinch of it in our fingers. Okay. Let's put this away. We're going to spread this over the top of all that we already did. And just kind of blends things together. Just add a little bit here and there. There you go. All right. There you go. That's all flocked. As a matter of fact, I think that's all I really want to flock. I don't think I want to flock towards the back there. I think I just want to leave, leave the rest really barren and dirt so I can put some static grass. So that's what we're going to do. 
So, I say I am done with the flock. So what I, what I normally do is I have a catch-all, since they're all blended together already. I'll use them on something and I'll put it in a canister like this. And just simply, as you can see, there's a big blend going on there. And I'll use that for a piece of terrain or scenery of some kind when I get enough of it. So, all right. So we are flock for the most part. That's really actually all I really needed. I'm just kind of looking at it. And we're gonna put our, our gun emplacement there, right there. They're walking around in the muddy areas. That works out great. So that's our regular grass. So now we're going to put on our static grass. So I'm gonna get all this stuff out of the way and get set up for that. Be back in a sec. All right, so now the last thing I'm going to do to this base, or one of the last things I'm going to do to this base, is we're going to add some tall static grass. And the easiest and simple way to do this is with pure PVA glue and static grass and some tweezers. So um, I'm going to put a little bit around this box. I'm going to put over here in this corner, around this corner here, maybe a little bit inside, maybe a, a couple right here and some, some right here, maybe something along those lines around these sandbags, just a little bit of grass just to break things up. So first thing you need to do is you need to find the, uh, a really crappy brush, one you don't care about. This is mine here. And we put some PVA in our palette. And all you got to do is dip it in the PVA and put the PVA where you want it. All right, so we're just gonna take a hunk of your static grass just like this here. And actually, I should have a plate underneath it, silly me. All right, got a fresh paper plate here. Okay, so we're gonna take a big hunk of our static grass and we're just gonna drop it. So all we're gonna do is drop it. There we go. So now it's all covered, all where I put the glue. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this dry for probably about, oh, I don't know, uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so. And then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna dust it off. I'm gonna pick it up and dust it off of the uh, um, CD or the base. And once I do that, you'll see how it's, it's all standing up and staticky and looking like taller grass than the flock that we put down. So you can add more or less or whatever you want to this piece. Uh, the static grass is probably where I'm going to stop. So just because it's plain Jane and it'll go with pretty much any board that you want to put it on. So I'll be back in a sec to show you guys what it looks like when I dust it off. Back in a sec. All right. We dusted it off. We let it dry for about 20 minutes. The glue is not completely dry, but as you can see, you get a good mixture um, in there of your static grass and how it blends into our regular turf over here. Um, I really wanted it to, to blend um, so it 
it will look um, like it's a part of it. So um, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, it blends well together. So now uh, the last thing we're going to do to this base, the very last thing is we are going to put some rocks down, some uh, boulders, I guess you can say. Um, the reason for this, it kind of breaks it up even more. And I, that's as far as I'm going to uh, take this space. So uh, we got a couple rocks here that I pulled out of my rock collection from the backyard. We're just simply going to take it, dip it in our PVA right here. Straight PVA. Don't worry about watering it down. We're going to find a good home for it. And there you have it. Uh, it's all finished, finally. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching um, this step-by-step. -step. And now you could take it even further, th further than that if you really, really want to. It wouldn't be hard to add some more tufts, different colored tufts around there and stuff like that. But I just wanted to give you the base I basic idea how I flock it. Um, I'll probably add some other stuff besides just the rocks. I'll probably add some, probably some tall, grass tufts over here somewhere um, or on the back here um, in and amongst the static grass or just leave it alone the way it is. Um, the true test is going to be me putting this anti-tank gun, which it was designed for, in his bunker. So there we go. Fits perfectly and that boulder right there is almost perfect to hold back the machine. So there we go. So there's one base, <laughs> a burnt out tree. And we have our boxes of ammo. We got our sandbags, we got our rocks, extra sandbags right here, the crates. And the only thing that's missing is the men who are gonna fire it. A few shells on the ground, which I'm painting separately. And that'll be a whole different, uh, different uh, video altogether. So thanks for joining me for this. I really, really appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Please tell a friend. Please spread the word for me. I'd really appreciate it. Also, I will have some still shots of this at the end of the, the video here. Don't forget about that so you guys can kind of see the burnt out tree and uh, close-ups of what's going on here on the base itself. Um, like this video. Leave me some comments. And uh, last but not least, from me to you, ta-ta! And I will catch you in my next video.